Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I've learned as I've grown into the person that I am today. And today I only brought two books with me. I brought both of the Melody Beatty books. Um, so these are going to be the meditations that we read today. I'm in such a good mood today. Are you in a good mood? Happy Sunday. How are you? Are you having a good day? I feel very accomplished today. Good mood. Getting a lot done. Let's see what the meditation is. I'm having a hard time getting there. Giving from the language of letting go. Let me put on my reading glasses. Are you guys ready? Let's get right into this. Giving. Don't be afraid of giving. For a while, we may need to back off from giving as we learn to discern the difference between healthy giving and caretaking, which leaves us, which leaves us feeling victimized and others feeling resentful. This is a temporary spot. To be healthy, to do our part in the spiritual way of life, to be part of the endless cycle of the universe, guided by our creator, we need to give and receive. Both parts are important. What is healthy giving? This is a fine-lined behavior each of us must seek to understand for ourselves. It is giving that feels good and does not leave us feeling victimized. It is giving that holds the giver and the receiver in high esteem. It is giving based on a desire to do it rather than from a sense of guilt, pity, shame, or obligation. It is giving with no strings attached, or it is giving based on a clean, direct contract. Uh, whether, it is, whether it is giving of our time, efforts, energy, comfort, nurturing, money, or ourselves, it is giving that we can afford. Giving is part of the chain of giving and receiving. We can learn to give in healthy ways. We can learn to give in love. We need to keep an eye we need to keep an eye on our giving to make sure it has not crossed the line into caretaking. But we need to learn to give in ways that work for us and others. Today, God, guide me in my giving. Help me give to others in healthy ways. Help me give what feels right, what feels good, what feels clean, and what I can afford. Uh, really great meditation. And I think a really healthy meditation in talking about like boundaries and limits, you know, um, I think that most of us are givers and takers at any given time, you know, depending on what situation you're in or whatever. But have you ever met somebody that is like, <laughs> I'm such a giver. Like I'm always taking care of other people. It's like, okay, this martyrdom must stop today. Like I can't listen to it. Martyrdom to me is like such a, a sign of victimization. And the reason that I'm not big on that is because then people are defining themselves um, by what they're doing for others and what uh, how others depend on them. And it's this kind of like very sick cycle of codependency in a negative way that is not healthy. It's basically saying this person couldn't take care of themselves if it wasn't for me, which there may be truth to that. But then why are you having to sing your own praises? Do you feel like you're not getting the validation and the acceptance from others? Then that's the issue, right? Then the issue that you need to say is like, I have been working really, really hard and it would be nice to get acknowledged for that you know like I've been taking care of you for months on end and it's like you don't ever say anything and you complain like it would be nice to get a thank you every once in a while you know instead of just telling because then we don't usually tell the people that we're givers towards we usually tell those people that will listen to it like our close friends or co-workers or whatever I am such a giver like I'm always taking care of my mom and my family and my kids and you know I drive around to all the soccer games my husband he doesn't help at all you know what I mean have you ever heard one of those people complain I like shut off like right away when people do that to me. I don't know why. It's not like I don't feel bad for them. I do. But I also think that, you know, like we live in a world where we have to ask for what we need. I mean, people aren't going to just automatically guess what you need. And if you need help and you need assistance from people, then you need to say that, you know, there are so many people that I know that are givers that don't ever say anything about that. My, my best friend is a complete giver. She is like, she's constantly doing things for other people and never asking for anything in return, you know, never. And, um, she just is like one of the most thoughtful people ever. And I can remember, I've told this story on here before, but I'm going to tell it again. So my, uh, she and her husband have a couple that they're very, very close with that they've known for 30 years. And, um, she, um, yeah, about 30 years because that Tanya and her husband's anniversary is coming up on 30 years. So anyway, um, this, 
couple, the husband was very, very sick with a brain tumor and was um, dying and has since passed away. It's very sad. And um, so one day, like, I had all this crap that was going on and I was complaining. I was like, oh my God, Tanya, like, this person's driving me crazy. It was just like all this petty BS that I was complaining about. And we had gone to get a fountain pop and I had called her like three times that day complaining about how bad my life was that day when it, there was really nothing that bad about it at all, you know? And so she got in the car and she was just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I was like, what did you do today? And she was like, oh, I went over to so-and-so's house and um, like I rented some movies from them from the Red Box and then I made them dinner and then I cleaned their house so that they could just kind of relax together and have a day um, just sitting there, you know, watching movies and stuff together. And I was like, what? I was like, how do you get to that point? And she's like, what do you mean? And I said, how do you just, and she's like, it's just important for me to get out of myself. She's like, you know, that's what I was taught was to always get out of myself and be there for others. And it's that service in the last few years, this happened several years ago, it's been that service in the last few years that has really made the difference for me, that has really helped me get out of myself and attempt to be there for others and suit up and show up. And um, not because I'm asked. You know, I think one of the greatest parts of giving is doing things without being asked, you know? Um, the same couple, we have some friends that we know that are, you know, sober that like live around them. And so this one um, woman asked uh, Tanya, she said, is there anything that they need done or whatever, you know? And Tanya said, I mean, sometime in the next couple of weeks I need their yard, you know, mowed. And she was like, oh, okay. And Tanya didn't even think much about it. And the next day she was driving over there taking some groceries. The yard was mowed the next day. This woman had gone out there that morning and mowed their lawn. I mean, it's just like just doing things out of the kindness of your heart, you know? Like, and just, and not telling anybody about it, not singing your own praises, not being like, oh my God, I'm such a giver. I'm such a hard, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's like the art of altruism is the act of selfless selflessness and not needing to tell anybody just trying to do good deeds and put good deeds out there into the world because you want to be a better person because you want to put that positive energy out there in the world but you don't need any pats on the back for it but it's hard too i think you know like i have friends of, i mean i do I, I i not that i think i know i have friends of mine that take care of, you know, both sets of elderly parents and their six kids and they're driving everywhere and they're making dinner and, you know, it's a lot of work for both parents sometimes or if they're single parents or whatever, it's just a lot of work and they do the best they can, you know, and what more can you do in a situation like that? So I think it's about setting limits and boundaries with people. You have to also ask people for help. People will help you, you know, if you, if you give them the opportunity to help you. All right, let's read from Journey to the Heart. December 13th. Do, 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 do. It just occurred to me, this is the strangest thing. I talk about it all year long and then like I always forget like the week before. My sobriety birthday is in four days. Like that is so crazy to me. This is not, 20, 26 years ago, this was not a good week for me. <laughs> anyway, okay. December 13th, learn to live with ambiguity. Sometimes the picture isn't finished yet. Ideas, possibilities, hopes, dreams float around. I love the word ambiguity, by the way. I don't know why, I just think it's a pretty word. <laughs> Not because of what it means, just I think it's pretty. Ambiguous, ambiguity. December 13th, learn to live with ambiguity. Sometimes the picture isn't finished yet. Ideas, possibilities, hopes, dreams float around, circling us like asteroids around a planet. We may think events in our lives are happening aimlessly, without purpose. All we see are disconnected floating bl blobs. We, search, we reach for them, try to grab them in our hands so we can connect them, force them into a hole, force them in, W-H-O-L-E, force them into a picture we can see, something that makes sense. Let the pieces be, let yourself be, let life be. Sometimes chaos needs to precede order. The pieces will come together in a picture that makes sense, in a beautiful work of art that pleases. You don't have to force the pieces to fit together if it's not time. You don't have to know. There is power sometimes in not knowing, there is power in letting go, power in waiting, power in stillness, power in trust. There is power in letting the power in stillness, power in trust. There is power in letting the disconnected pieces be until they settle into a hole. Settle into a hole. Settle into a hole. The action you are to take will appear timely, clearly. What you're to do, what you're to do will become clear. Let the pieces be and they'll take shape. Soon you'll see the picture. I love this so much. It's like, 
those magic eye pictures, I used to always use that as an analogy for life. You know, it's like you look at something, you're trying to figure it out, you're trying to figure out what you're supposed to do, and it's like all of a sudden it just you know, it's like, oh my God, and I never saw that before. I'm a big believer, and you don't have to believe in prayer or higher power, but I'm a big believer in praying on something, you know? And like internally, I often feel like, like conversations with God, like I, of, like I often feel like I have the answer, or I've heard the answer. I think that really what this is talking about is just, uh, you know, trusting the process, trusting the journey, which has been what I have talked about so much on this channel this year. Um, it's really just about trusting that process of life, you know, and not having to figure out everything in that moment, not having to have all the answers, but trusting that sooner or later it will just kind of happen the way that it's supposed to. And, you know, and just trusting the way that you're going, you know, and not trying to control that. And that, and that really is the opposite of codependency is letting go of control and that is what many of us should be practicing you know this has kind of become a codependent channel hasn't it is practicing letting go of that control and just floating down the river of life so anyway um and trusting the journey and trusting the process two good meditations today so uh, and i didn't go 20 minutes i just went 11 minutes so anyway let me know what you think about those in the comment section below i hope you guys are having a great sunday i love you and i'll see you tomorrow bye